Welcome, I'm your host Dustin, and today we're going to be talking about this new film that's dropping on Screenbox on December 19th called Santa Stein. Very, very excited about this, and I will let everybody go ahead and introduce themselves because we have a lot of people on this one. So um, whoever wants to go first, let's go right down the line. Okay, I can go first. Uh, my name is Manuel, Manuel Chameleon. I am a Miami-based film director. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much all I got. Awesome. I'm uh, Benjamin Edelman. I co-wrote and co-directed and co-edited this movie with Manuel. Yep. Very special guest we brought with us. Yeah, which is awesome. Thank you for joining. It's awesome. Go ahead and introduce Glad yourself. Glad to be here. And, you know, if you want me to leave, just let no. me know. Oh, no. <laughs> More the merrier, trust me, because this movie is a blast. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, glad and excited to be here. My name is Washisa Sakul. I was and still am a producer on Santa Stein, a lovely, lovely movie that we got to make together um, and started in 2019. Long, long process. He, he still is a producer. It's a never ending process. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and there's one thing that I always like to kind of ask, because um, this is a good way to kind of open up um, the people that I interview and for the people who um, you know listen and want to know you know how things kind of started so i guess um we can go we can start with manuel then we can go to ben and then and then you know just kind of go down the line um where did the love of filmmaking or writing kind of begin with you okay that's a good one uh so actually i i started wanting to become a filmmaker in high school i grew up already watching a lot of vhs tapes we all do Hell yeah. um my story is actually uh there was a girl in a class of mine that I really wanted to impress and she was really into film. So I was like, okay, I can, I can do that. And I started getting really into film. And then before I knew it, I had forgotten all about the girl because it just became this obsessive work of mine. So yeah, back in 2013 was when I made my first movie and I've just been like pumping out short films uh, ever since. And that's, that's really how I, how I got into filmmaking to begin with. Uh, just uh really deep dive into a lot of like the classics and yeah that's awesome awesome ben um yeah when i was younger i always loved writing and writing little stories and i i in middle school i would write this i never finished the book but little chapters i would hand out to friends so i always enjoyed writing and then filmmaking just kind of grew over time. I loved watching movies and I had a project in middle school where I was able to make a short film. And from there, I was just sold. I wanted to do that and only that. And that is uh, you know, where we are today. Awesome. Fashish? Yeah, and for me, it was making funny videos on YouTube in high school, trying to be like Smosh and Ryan Higa and all those people. Oh, nice. Were a... And then the part that really made me stick with it was seeing people actually laugh sometimes and being able to feel responsible for that felt so cool and then uh wanting to kind of replicate that and entertain people is um what really keeps me going in filmmaking yeah and um you know as somebody who consumes a lot of films and you know there's a whole podcast dedicated to it um when i can watch something that you know, can kind of conjure an emotion, whether it being sadness, being funny, being scared. I think it's always really cool um, to kind of show that, um, especially in these interviews to kind of, you know, explain like my side of things and how it kind of affected me. So yeah, you saying that is, is something that I always look for. And the one thing that I've been striving for the past, I want to say 10 years or so, is finding that one thing that really scares me because I've watched so much horror movies in, in my entire life that like it's so hard to find that one thing that scares me but equally something that makes me laugh just as hard and this is a film that really balances so well with you know comedic moments cool kills um, good character um, arcs and everything that's going on with us as well and so I kind of wanted to go ahead and talk about what was it like having to you know create this this world before we even start talking about you know 
taking a twist on Frankenstein and everything, but creating this one little world with these characters, what was the challenges in doing that? Uh, I guess, Ben, we can, we can probably start with you. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, so I think on paper, you know, we well, we started off by making this as a short film. I think it's, I guess that's important to throw in there that sure. uh, Manny had approached me with an idea he had and I was so sold on it. So we made the short film together. And then from there, we wanted to make the feature. And from growing into that feature, you know, we knew that this was a world that had lost Christmas that almost like in our head, I think it was like this almost this icy like dystopia that we could not achieve budget wise but that was our <laughs> our um mindset for this world just this desolate wasteland of sadness um I like that but, once we, <laughs> but once we just once we scaled back to uh figure out how can we make this you know doable for us um it was really about the characters about creating a cast of characters you know we wanted not just one but like four or five six characters that people could enjoy following that had different personalities and i think a lot of the drawing board early early on before we even had plot manny was probably just figuring out like who who are these characters and how can we have fun with them yeah and um manuel i guess we can go to you what was what was some yeah. of the challenges for you so yeah no ben started off completely on the right track which is that developing those characters was absolutely the most important thing that we focused on and we we're like okay like we had to start somewhere we had these like caricatures you know we the bully the loser friend the protagonist like trying to navigate how to make each of those characters unique was a challenge but then um this is actually the first feature ben and i had written uh together and it was tough trying to figure out how to balance going between like who's on screen at what time right like who who sure. takes up what amount of space in this you know these are people that you see them and you're like okay he's gonna die he's gonna die you know they're cannon <laughs> fodder. that's 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 how you do it like how can you make these guys the most detestable people ever so that they make sense within the thematic of the movie on, on when they die so i think we ended up having to do a lot of research on like actually a lot of television shows like ensemble oh, casts like like community where we'd see like okay like how do they go ahead and navigate who gets what screen presence? How do they keep it entertaining without it slugging? Like, so that was probably the thing we put the most research into was figuring out not just who these characters were, but what role they played in pushing the story forward during all of their moments. Nice. And com community is a great, uh, uh, reference there, Manny, because like there are so many side characters in that show I could name that don't always have like a full plot arc, but like when you see them in an episode, you're like, oh yeah, it's that guy, and they have they have an impact because that's such a well defined world. Yeah, that's awesome. Vashish, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say like on an entirely different track when it comes to producing the world world building that was being written on paper into like actuality with a limited budget sponsored well uh donated <laughs> to, uh, Kickstarter. um the hardest part was definitely locations because we switched locations so many times in this film and we had to to keep the pace up and to keep it fun and engaging and trying to find all those different crazy places was was a mission and a half but it was definitely very very fulfilling because uh, it was cool to see everything come to life together, especially when the scenes were edited together. Yeah, yeah. Um, this movie, for it being you know less than a ninety-minute mark, which is the sweet spot, is also really, really awesome. And for you to have all these characters that we're talking about, and, you know, building around everybody, and to make sure that they all have you know their time on screen to make it not feel rushed at all which i think you guys do a great job of of not being like oh here's this person on screen oh now they're gone and you're not going to see them for like another like 10 minutes i think with the characters that you have and with everything that's going on in this film because really the action part like the one thing that everybody's like looking forward to is like okay when is when is the Santa Stein going to you know come out you wait about like a half hour about that mark so it's like there's a lot of build up a lot of um, development in that time you kind of get the backstory of like what's going on um, and then you get a uh, feel for this world and what these friend groups are really like and it's very relatable that's another thing that I always kind of you know look for in films especially when it's kind of designed um, or you know made for like a teen young adult and adult audience is can I relate to this is this something that 
I have gone through or is this something people are going through now? And that's another thing I think all of you do such a great job on is making sure that these characters are relatable. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish he's, uh, I know one of his dreams is to make a, a teen uh, comedy in a sense, one of those relatable, like grounded teen comedy dramas. And he always talked about that uh, to us about coming that of age, and, uh, coming of age, coming of age. Yes, yeah. there we go. Of course, that, <laughs> that is the... really indie yeah. and really cool, right? But I, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I was talking to Manny about this yesterday, but the energy that Paige and Max have together with each other. Like when we were filming some of their early scenes, I was like, hey, Manny, Beth, or as uh, one of our other producers like to call them, Benny, combining the co-director names together. <laughs> but, uh, Benny, it it's, you know, their chemistry is really good and one could foresee it being something more than just the friendship. Uh, and I feel like Manny and Ben decided on the best course of action of towing that, you know, getting it at that right level because um, life isn't black and white. You know, sometimes movies are very black and white when it comes to relationships where it's like, ah, oh, you're either together or you're not together. Yeah. But I think it tows the line very, very well. Yeah. And um, I, I agree in that. I think everything on this like works really, really well. Um, we can give uh, Ben a second if he needs to uh, take care of, uh, Anything you're good now? All right, awesome, awesome. So um, I kind of want to turn this now to like the main point that everybody's you know curious about, and I'm curious about, is turning a classic monster story into a holiday massacre. So how did this kind of come about? I know you guys mentioned earlier that there was a short. So what was it like, you know, having to go from the short? And then I imagine that short crafted into this full length, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so what was it, um, you know, like having to take that story and then kind of modernize it and then put a holiday twist on it? Okay. Uh, so the this this actually uh, technically it's it's the fault of a hurricane. Oh. Uh, a hurricane. A hurricane came to Miami and um. Our school, we had a, a Halloween festival that we used to put on every year, but because we were out of school for like a month because uh, this the hurricane kind of destroyed a lot of the city, uh, it ended up being pushed to December, but it was still going to be a holiday a holiday movie. And I, I had been wanting to make a Frankenstein movie, and I was like, oh, God, like my Frankenstein movie, it's ruined. I, can, I can't make it. Like, wait, <laughs> wait a minute. We, we, can still, we can still snatch something out of this. So I turned to Ben, and I was like, Ben. Just, just hear me out, man. One word, Stanistein, Frankenstein, Santa. And he was like, I'm sold. And he went and he came back the next day with like a seven page long script. He's like, what do you think? And we worked together and we, we developed it. And it was, it was really interesting. The first, the first movie is definitely the short film was definitely a little bit more straightforward. Kid kill Santa brings him back. It didn't play on a lot of those themes of like the creationism uh, of it okay. all. But then, um, when we were making the feature, we were trying to work, focus on that work of character. And that's when we really started actually turning back to the Mary Shelley story and thinking about like a lot of the themes that carried that movie across. And, you know, it's, it's hard to make somebody that's like very clearly doing the wrong thing into your protagonist, you know, like yeah. you're like watching this movie and you're like, Oh God, like is Max a good guy? Like there was, there was one movie, one scene it's cut from the movie right now where like, Max takes like a chainsaw and starts cutting into a body and there's like blood spraying on his oh, face. Oh, I want to see that and, so bad. <laughs> it looked DVD cool. Extended. It did look very cool. But then we thought, you know, like, I, I don't think I like this guy. I'm watching this movie and I don't think I like this guy. This isn't working for me. He looks too terrifying. He looks too much like the villain. You have to try to find the, the right balance of like making him somebody you can relate to making the the story something like oh yeah i would do the same thing if i could but in that moment yeah uh ben anything you want to add to this yeah i mean um yeah expanding from that like you know thinking of frankenstein i think the the part in the movie that's always stood out to me is the scene with the little girl um when he when yeah. frankenstein meets the little girl and it's like so innocent at first but he obviously kills the child and it's uh you know, it's 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 this whole. It, it brings up a lot of thematic questioning in the movie, and I think on paper, Manny and I had wrapped our heads around that 
concept and we even put in this a scene of of santa stein and a little girl though i think our script early on was so monster focused so um violence kill focus that um michael vidovich our uh, the, the our actor for santa stein he's the one who kind of kept pulling that humanity back to the character and bringing those original mary shelley themes back to the fourth the forefront because um he would always come to us and ask us these questions about hey you know what what should my character be thinking here? Where it's like he's a monster, but but of course, through further discussion and as we expand on the script, you know, he really brought that humanity to the role that was very much needed for that tug and pull of uh, of Max and Santa Stein. Awesome, Vashish, Anything you want to add? Just because Ben mentioned the scene with the little girl on a bike. So fun fact: that was Manny's younger sister. Oh, really? Awesome. Yes. And I don't feel like this is a spoiler because it happens in the first half of the film. But uh, I imagine Manny's feelings towards his sister are exactly why uh, what happened to his sister <laughs> happened in the film, you know? I um, want to throw out there for that scene, Manny applied the fake blood to the scene because no one else could do it. It had to be him, you know? He, yes. He had to... <laughs> oh. That's awesome. You know, as, as a as a middle child, I have a younger sister. So, you know, there, there definitely are days where it's just like, you. <laughs> you understand me. You understand me. Yes, yes, 100%. Um, but that's really, really cool, you know, kind of hearing that, um, how it kind of all uh, became. So you said that you wanted to do a Frankenstein story. And you were saying mm-hmm. you wanted to mix it with Santa. Was it always something that you wanted to do, like mix Santa and Frankenstein? Or is it because it was in December, you're like, this actually sounds way better? Or was there a different um, you know, way that you were going to go no. about it? So that's exactly what ended up happening. Originally, in my when I first came up with the thought, I was thinking more along the lines of just kind of like, generics frankenstein story mad scientist sure. brings sand creates a fake santa because there's no such thing as santa ben's actually the one that decided to bring it back down to this uh more relatable classic uh slasher style movie which i think was absolutely the right call because it's you know it it, it works it works better with with the the themes that the movie explores about like uh learning the consequences of your actions uh and it ended up paying off really well. So was it something I always wanted to do? No, it wasn't. I mean, it was, it was, I wanted to make a Frankenstein movie first. The circumstance, it was a birth of circumstance, but um, I'll, ultimately I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy with the, with the results that, that ended up coming out. Yeah. This, this film is a blast. Um, and I kind of want to lead this into, you know, where it is right now. Well, not now, but where it's going to be this month is on Screenbox. Um, yeah. you know, I've been doing, uh, some coverage for Screenbox for quite a while now. And they're always like, Hey, we got some really cool films. We want you guys to check out. So I check them out and I love every single thing that they've been putting on this platform. So I wanted to, you know, kind of ask you guys how you feeling about being on, I think like one of the biggest, you know, streaming platforms right now, especially in the horror genre. They were totally the right people to have our movie we we knew that the moment we talked to them even though it took many conversations because um, we are children but um <laughs> yeah. no they are they're great and they have an awesome platform um and we knew that they would take care of the movie and care to put it out there with the right crowd and the right audience so i'm really excited for it to be on screenbox i'm telling all my friends about screenbox they're learning about for the first time and i'm like look what they have and they're like wow so yeah how about you, uh, Manny? How are you feeling about it? Uh, it was definitely a Cinderella story, for <laughs> sure. Like we were, we were always wondering, like, you know, you make a movie, <laughs> like, but it's like we're children. We made a movie, and we're like, oh, is this actually the way you're supposed to do this? Because <laughs> we don't know how to actually put this movie in front of people. And then one day, uh, we get an email, or like, yeah, it was an email from a guy called Brad Miska, and we're like, wait. Brad Miska and we like look him up and of course he's the producer of VHS and we're like wait what he's asking for a screener I was for the freaking movie. out we, just, we couldn't believe it we were like we're getting punked somebody somebody's lying to us <laughs> this is all fake and the next thing we knew they wanted to set up a meeting with us and talk to us about getting the movie on a streaming service and that's uh when when yeah that's yeah. We, we died it was a miracle 
huge, huge milestone for us because I think, as you can tell, we're pretty much, this is the first feature film that we've ever gotten released officially, or you know, just gotten released, period, right? And it is so very cool to see it go on a platform where people care about this type of horror, comedy, um, low-budget, crazy kill type of film. And um, yeah, I was, I know Manny, both Manny and I agree on this. Um, I'm sure Ben does too, but I didn't get a chance <laughs> to talk to Ben. But we think that this will be one of those moments where our immigrant dads are going to be proud of us when they see it on <laughs> Apple TV slash Amazon Prime. So it's it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Congrats, guys. And I know that you showed, was it, had to have been this year or last year at Popcorn Frights? Was a few it months ago. Year? Yeah, this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was I, I was trying to make it to that, but I, I didn't get to it in time, unfortunately. But I saw wow. some of the interviews that were going out, and you guys popped up, and I was like, "Oh, that's awesome! I'm going to be interviewing these guys today." Um, hey, cool. But that's <laughs> that's so cool, and to see where you guys are heading, especially being so young, um, of making a film and getting on a big platform that's you know growing so much. They their output is insane, and to be like seeing some of these exclusives that they're getting and picking them up from you know other uh well from festivals really and then giving a lot of care to them because it's a platform that's made for filmmakers and fans it's not a platform that's going to take advantage um as i know a lot of people who work there and they're really really awesome i'm really happy to see that you guys are part of the family now well thank you um i guess we can move on to casting um, cause we were kind of talking about this earlier with character developments and, and, you know, talking about Santa Stein and how that character was made more human from the actor. Were there people in here that you were already like, we want this person in our film, or did you kind of, you know, have to host a lot of auditions for this? I guess, uh, oh, it was, you know, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll go. it was, it was a mix. I mean, we, uh, Took a few people from the short film, um, came okay. along for the feature. Um, actually, the Max character, Jared Karotkin, he's from the short. Um, awesome. And he came to the short as a first-time actor, kind of, I think the way he always tells us is he wasn't sure he wanted to be an actor, but he saw the audition flyer we had put out there, and I mean, he knocked it out of the park. He was he was great for the role, and he took, he took the role and took growing that character very seriously. Um, and we... Um, yeah, I mean, we we went on. Uh, what was the website? Which is the uh, that we backstage. used? The beautiful backstage. Yeah, backstage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and we were surprised by how many people came through. From you know, we figured we get some Miami people, but like all over the state, people were driving in for auditions, and so uh, that was uh, that was pretty cool. And um, you know, it was all about you know once we had nailed down those characters, we really knew what we were looking for. But obviously, there are still surprises along the way of uh, actors and actresses that can bring a different dimension to the character that we didn't expect. So, you know, it, it helps helps to see them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a, a guy we went to school with who made another movie, which also actually is on Screenbox, called The Last Thanksgiving. His name, shout out, Eric Lawrence. Yeah, oh, yeah. Eric. I love Eric. I had him on the show. Uh last year actually he's he's a great guy oh yeah yes yep. he is great i yes. know yeah, eric's a really cool dude yes. and uh on his set is actually where we met michael vidovich because michael vidovich is the one that plays the he plays the big scary uh yeah, yeah. oh that's in, right uh, Thanksgiving. oh my <laughs> yeah. i don't know how i didn't realize that oh wow yeah okay. remember the name michael vidovich he's like he's gonna be the next uh <laughs> next boris karloff uh and he he was somebody that I had met on that set. And I was like, this is the absolute tallest man I've ever met in my life. Like, <laughs> such a physically imposing presence, but also just very kind, very generous with his time, very well studied and gives his input. Um, a very interesting background as a mortician. So he can talk to you a lot about, <laughs> a lot about uh, how bodies work. But uh, so we had a meeting with him and I was like, hey, listen, like I, I want you to play this role like i i think it'd be i think you're the perfect fit like you are this imposing presence like it, it's more than just like being a, a monster you actually have to like take up the space and at first he was hesitant you know he was like oh i don't know if it, i don't know if my agent would think it's the best thing for me to play santa claus in a movie <laughs> uh but we convinced him uh and that like i mentioned earlier he really came with this 
with this research on character and all the different ways that he could bring the humanity in this character forward. So that was one of those finds that uh, ended up actually changing the course of the movie because if it wasn't for him, it would have just been another, just another monster, monster movie. So he's I, definitely I, one of the largest impacts. I also want to give just a huge shout out to our actors just in general because our production was split in half because of COVID. We of course. filmed the first half of the movie and then when March came around, our preparations, you know, obviously fell apart. But all of them really supported and believed in the project and came back all those months later, a whole year later for a second round of filming. So, uh, you know, big shout out to them for really um, just being a huge part, you know, believing in the project, believing in us in the film. Awesome. Rashish, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, we had some really funny people like uh, (laughs) Leo Pereira, who was also a producer on the film. He played Peter. That's the right name, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. He played Peter, and I crack up every time when he starts knifing the apple. Uh, It's so funny. Kaylee Heiner was also hilarious. Like, she made the whole room laugh. and we would put her through the worst, most awful things. Like she had to be completely soaked. Um, well, she played the what was the name of her character? Michaela. Michaela. Yeah, Michaela. Michaela. Yeah. She played Michaela, and Michaela got wet for one scene, and so she had to get wet multiple different days. And uh, she was just—it did not stop her from being hilarious. Uh, so she was a trooper. Yeah, it turns out once you push a character in a pool, they got to remain a little soaked for the rest of the movie, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's that's awesome to hear. Um, yeah, that's that's great. And I think for everybody that's in here, you know, for being, this, being such a low-budget film also, and, you know, I guess casting locally, and a lot of people obviously, a lot of people don't know these actors, so. This movie is a great showcase for them for, you know, putting on their resume and to show that they actually can build through a character and, you know, show different sides of them throughout a film is amazing. So you guys did a great job at, at casting everybody in this film, for sure. Um, and um, I guess you guys are kind of hinting at it already, but you are all in the same area, correct? In Miami? Sort of. They're they're still in Miami. I live in Sarasota, but I, I go to Miami quite often, so I oh, okay. I still see them occasionally and you know wave from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> we we all met through the University of Miami film program and oh, like nice. a lot of this movie got made by filmmakers who recently graduated, like Manny had been just graduated when we 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 made this. Or, uh, you know, a lot of people on our crew were still students too, so it was that's so wild. incredible. Wow. Wow. For you to, you know, be fresh out of, you know, your studies and everything and to even have people still working and have a film that's blowing up like this and being on a platform, it's blowing my mind even more. That is, wow. Great job, guys. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you me. are way too kind. So shout out to you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I, nice. you facilitate this thing so well and you are so good with words. I want to be you when I grow up. So, <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, I mean, like, I say it how it is because I review a lot of movies. I watch a lot of movies, like way too much. And when I find these films, um, whether they're sent to me or if I just you know have a friend that tells me about them or I stumble upon them, and it kind of strikes something in me to be like, this is a film I can watch whenever I want and have a blast, That that's a really, really good thing. And this is a film that I definitely can. This is now going to be in my my December, you know, playlist every year now. So I'm I'm really, really excited to, you know, keep this in the library. Um thank you. That was honestly something we were thinking about even while making it. We were like, what what do we need to put in this movie to make this something people want to watch yearly? Because we have those same yeah. films too. We have that list of films that we watch every yeah. year on Halloween or Christmas. And you know what what ingredients do those have that we can put in here? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um hmm, I have a lot of questions. I'm trying to figure out which one I want to go to next. Um, this is a fun one. Um, I guess, Ben, we can talk and ask you, um, have you always been a fan of horror movies? So I always enjoyed spooky season stuff growing up. I feel like I never watched like true horror horror until like college, honestly. 
But once I like hit that time where I was like, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to watch some really hardcore stuff. It was everything from there. I just love, I, I adore the genre. It's something I, I, I don't even do Halloween marathons anymore because the marathon lasts 365 days a year. It's just, <laughs> yes. it's just a whole, it's just the whole year at this point. That's so awesome. yeah, it, it definitely grew from like, you know, dipping my toes with like maybe Halloween Town on Disney Channel. To like, <laughs> okay, let's finally. Although, I mean, I think I did watch Saw 2 when I was much too young. So that might have been part of the reason I nice. waited a little bit. <laughs> nice. Um, do you have a favorite that you kind of go to uh, more often than others? Or is it you kind of just like you like to spread everything out and give everything, you know, a fair watch? Oh, man, I'm basic. Halloween and Scream. I'm oh, basic. my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. Yes, there's the math. I've, seen, I've been looking at the math there. Hell and yeah. Manny, yes, uh, Manny, what's your favorites? Uh, well, one of the first ones I ever watched, which I should specify, is, is not that it's a favorite as much as it, it really did scar me because I was definitely too young when I watched it. You know, sure. like we watch Friday the 13th movies now. We're like, ah, yeah, they're full of cam. Jason's like funny, whatever. When you're like 11 and you see this like giant guy, like lumbering figure with a hockey mask and a machete, like you're just kind of like, ah, oh, I hope. I hope he doesn't come to my room tonight. I hope he doesn't kill me tonight. So one of the first movies I watched was actually Freddy vs. Jason. And oh, nice. That one okay, is, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, that one is one of my favorite ones because it kind of blends that that body horror, that kind of like classic slasher machete energy with a lot more of the creative uh, nightmarish thrills of Nightmare of Elm Street. So that's one of the ones that I kind of really, really impacted me. And actually, it's a fun one because uh, I feel like Santa Stein kind of like kind of like is where is where both those characters meet in my head yeah he's kind of like okay this figure i can that's see like that very strong very massive but also has this kind of like supernatural element to him so that's one that impacted me as far as the original question about whether or not horror was a genre that I, I i definitely grew up exclusively watching horror movies in high school with a couple of friends of mine who just like have like horror movie massacre like uh, i really like the movie hostel which is okay kind okay of, Oh, a yeah. strange one, but Hostel. Hostel is, uh, too Eli, is Eli great Ross. too. Yeah, no, they're both they're both really good. The first, I, I always tell people, I'm like, hey, don't let don't let the body horror part of Hostel kind of like no, throw you off because no. it's actually like a pretty rock and roll movie. Um, and then yeah, as as I got older, I started moving on to the more uh, advanced horror. The, the, That's so uh, funny. The, the, <laughs> of the world, the, the more the more like yeah, like There's moving like different moving stages. The campus, yeah. you know, you graduate. Uh, so that's that's pretty much um, where where I'm at now. Awesome, Bashish, How about you? Have you always um, like horror, or is it something that you're kind of um, newly uh, getting into? I definitely always liked horror. Growing up, it, uh, my parents never really cared if we watched like a rated R horror movie, so I ended nice, up nice. watching some of those. And I can't say that I I never really ended up watching too many campy ones growing up although i've explored a lot more of that in the last couple of years and it's definitely been uh very interesting but th there was one film that scarred me as a kid and that was final destination oh yeah just because it, it really felt like it could happen to you and i i still remember where i was when i, I when i was watching the airplane scene oh, was oh, that yeah. final destination one yeah, yeah that's the first one yep yeah, that was horrifying. And then in terms of a favorite horror, it would have to be a favorite horror show. Okay. Mike Flanagan's Haunting of Hell House. Yeah. So good. That's a really good and pick. Anything Mike Flanagan, to be honest, is amazing. Fact. I don't know if you've seen Mike Flanagan's, one of his greatest works is actually his Kickstarter um, video, pitch video, which we watched oh, yeah. so much as we were planning our own Kickstarter. I just want to throw that out there, but I know he's great. I love all of his movies as well. Yeah, he's he's great. That's awesome. Um, another thing that I want to kind of touch on um, with this film, and I think you guys have to be aware of how much this kind of does a nod to Silent Night, Deadly Night. You know, especially as Santa Stein doing like the naughty and, and the nice thing, you know, it, it gave me kind of that vibe. And that's why I'm attaching to it a lot more is being like, OK, it feels familiar, but also feels very fresh. And that's that's another thing I always look out for, especially when, you know, someone's doing a holiday horror movie. Which way are they going to go? Is it going to be, you know, like Krampus? Is it going to be Silent Night Deadly? It's going to be something completely different. And this one, it kind of borrows I think a little bit from both, but just how kind of crazy things can get. You're dealing with a lot of characters, and then you're also dealing with this 
the Santa Claus, you know, zombie essentially going around, you know, killing people in absurd ways, which I think is really, really fun is another thing I look out for, especially when it's a slasher film is to be like, how are, are the kills? Are they fun? Have I seen it before? And if I have seen it before, are they reinventing it some way? And um, a lot of these ones I thought were very, very fun and very, you know, original to an extent for a lot of them. And I have to say, I think one of the fun ones to really see is the light um, when you uh, behead behead one of the characters, I think is, uh, is really, really fun. With the, with the Christmas lights, yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, thank you for, for making that shot. Fun story about the, the little mech stump that's left there uh it's it's really just a whole bunch of like raw steak wrapped around a dog chewing bone and while i was making it i had to leave it alone for like a second uh and i stepped out to the back room and i came back and i found that it was not only completely gone my dog was on the floor just like head down wagging her tail violently and i was like oh no so yeah the first the first fake neck my dog just like oh my god and <laughs> <laughs> wow i mean it does look pretty disgusting on 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 screen that's that's really funny <laughs> oh man um so oh this is another fun one i always like to kind of ask is um Vashish, we can we can start with you do you have a favorite scene in the film um i guess without spoiling or we can spoil it doesn't really matter it's gonna be coming out close to the release anyway so feel free to pick any any scene that you want spoil it oh. Spoiler, 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 says, do I it. hate spoilers when, when they come to me. Uh, <clears throat> but my favorite scene by far um, would have to be that liquor store scene. And there are oh, two yeah. reasons for it, right? First superficial reason is it's just so funny. The burrito falling um, and uh, Kaylee's performance in there with the security cam footage. It's just so hilarious. Um and the whole pressure of buying alcohol is just such a funny thing to see. And then the second part of it was, for me, that was such a hard location to get. We were 72 hours out from filming in that liquor store. And someone was flying in for that scene. Oh, wow. And we did not have a location locked because we could just not find anything that worked. Um, and at, th at that point, I was literally going through my contacts list and just calling and messaging people see if anyone knew anyone that owned the liquor store and luckily you know we got it awesome. we got it and we made it happen um but that just the struggle and journey of it made it so worth it like uh, i missed one of the days filming because i was graduating to get my master's uh i was graduating i was walking uh to get the diploma in gainesville and then I came back on the Sunday and then at like 2 a.m. I was like, uh, I joined them on set. I, t I took a nap first and then I joined <laughs> them on set to like, you know, 6, 7 a.m. So it was, it was, it was fun. That's and awesome. your favorite moment in there was the last scene we filmed over those uh, 48 hours there. So it was, uh, that's, that's a cool moment. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Um, Manuel, we can, uh, we can ask you, what, what was your favorite scene? So mine, mine are tied, and it's actually two back-to-back -back scenes, and they're so silly. They're such silly moments. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, my actual favorite, which is when Edgar the Mortician, it's like a little montage of him just, like, grabbing all this yes. equipment. Or, sorry, all this equipment and, like, suiting up. And the reason it's my favorite is because, A, I think the score combined with, like, the actual thing, like, it's just, like, every time I watch it, I'm just, like, rooting for the character. But also B, so that's one of those that while we were shooting something, we asked our, our B camera team, we're like, hey, can you, um, we need you to film this moment. Like, uh, uh, and in my head, I was thinking like, ah, oh, like that one scene in, in that Batman movie, um, Batman Forever in the yep. very beginning where he's like grabbing all his stuff. And then I'm like, yeah, you know, you just grab him, have him grab all his stuff. And then Leo, who was uh, Peter, who was also the producer, looks at him and like, oh, like that one moment in Batman Forever. And I was like, okay, he understands. He knows exactly what he's going for. And then it was just like, such a beautiful moment for me to watch that footage and be like, oh my God, he actually like he actually filmed exactly exactly what we needed him, what we needed him to film in that moment. So that's that's that one. And then the scene that immediately follows outside is uh when Max and Page are coming up to the police station 
And I just really like the character work there. I like the interactions that are silent between like Santa Stein and Max Causey after like experience, like it, this is a decisive moment in the movie, you know, like, will he actually be able to stop his creature? Will he not? And uh, ultimately, you know, I'm not going to go into the spoiler territory, but clearly he doesn't. <laughs> uh, but it's just a, a good moment. It's a good moment between those two characters and one one of those like emotional crutches that I think really serves to to push the movie forward. Because, you know, the movie can be funny. The movie can be scary. But at the end of the day, it does need these kind of like characters to work as the locomotive towards the story. And I think that's one of those like pivotal moments in the movie. So that's my favorite. Awesome. What about you, Ben? Um, I'm gonna go with the the big Kahuna scene, the the resurrection. Um, oh of, yeah, of Sandstein himself, and I think the reason it's my favorite is just because the whole movie hinges on that. Like the movie doesn't work if that scene doesn't work. If you're if you're someone watching the movie and you get to that point and that scene fails you, you're not gonna stick around. And for me to know that. To see that, I I feel like I hope that we um, made that scene work exactly like it should have been. That was the most proud moment for I think both me and Manny when we were editing is getting that scene through a few edits, finally seeing like okay, it clicks, it works. We we pulled it off. We we don't have to throw out the movie. And um, I don't think we touched it after we after we set that edit, even though many other scenes took more beyond that. But yeah, that's probably my favorite just because of that and we were definitely i was watching a lot of brian de palma at that time and not that i not that i think we even touched the godly levels of de palma himself but i like to think there was a little bit of influence in in a few scenes and i think that scene um helped us craft that moment as well awesome awesome those are all really good scenes um wow there's so much to talk about on this for this film but i want to ask what's next now that this is I guess it's still kind of being, you know, um, edited in the background or whatever you guys have for your final touches or anything else. What is next for all of you? Are you going to be doing another horror film? Do you want to branch off and do something else? Like, what, what's going on? I guess uh, Ben may start of with Santa you or Manuel, whoever wants to go. doesn't matter. I was just making a joke. I said Bride of Santa Stan. Ben can start. <laughs> he has the more interesting answer. Sure. And do I have a more interesting answer? <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, we're all here because we want to make films. So the next step for all of us is just continuing to make more, um, you know, stories that matter to us. Um, and, you know, we're we're always writing or at least dreaming of writing, as many writers do. And um, I right now I'll plug a separate thing. I'll plug a separate thing I'm doing. Sure. I do weekly movie reviews on um I work for an ABC station, an ABC Channel 7 at home and they let me go on TV sometimes if I shave. So I uh <laughs> I do uh I do some movie reviews so I've been having a lot of fun with that each That's week. Awesome. But yeah, it's always about writing and looking for the next project and I think the three of us are, you know, we've done some stuff. I know Manny will probably speak about some stuff he's done, but we're we're looking for the next big thing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Which shout out to Ben, his his last movie review, which Ben doesn't know I actually watched these. The Godzilla plus one, or is it minus one? I forget what the name yeah. is. <laughs> but uh it, that got like over ten thousand views, man. That's twenty four K. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. That's very awesome. impressive. Yeah, so for uh, me, yeah. do you do you want me to go? Oh, okay, there we go. Uh for me, I think it is always about constantly making things. I think sometimes when we try to make bigger things, especially considering how difficult it is to make feature films and how expensive it is, For sure. you know, sometimes it takes a while. Samstein took four years. We started this in 2019. Well, they actually started making a short film in 2018. So, uh, you know, it really took a while to get it going, but it was completely worth it. I just think, you know, so uh, first thing I think going on for me is like Ben mentioned before, you know, I'm a, I definitely want to make a coming of age film. So I've I want to see it. Thank you. Thank you. I will send it to you. I've <laughs> got a coming of age feature film script already written that I co-wrote um, with one of my buddies. So we're going to get the process rolling on seeing how to get that made awesome. with money so that, you know, it could, it could actually exist. But in the meantime, um, I will definitely also be making a short film. I like to make one short film a year because for me, it's, it's just beautiful to be in that mode of making things. 
And, you know, if it takes four years for a feature film to get shown, I don't want to not be able to show something, you know, here and again every year. So that's why I like kind of setting that parameter, making one every year. So I imagine I'll be making one next year. Probably a romantic comedy filmed on the island of Curacao is the idea I've got going right now. Uh, but those are the two things that are um, on the near horizon for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. How about you, Manuel? Uh, so since we finished making Sandstein, I've uh, I worked with our RDP Louise Afiuni. Shout out to Louise uh, on on a couple of short films that both Ben and Wishes helped me on. Uh, so I've mostly just been kind of doing that thing of like, once we finished the feature, I was like, okay, like shorts used to be hard, but after making that feature, I wonder, I wonder what it's like making a short right now. And we made a short, <laughs> and it was like, I, 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 it felt just like so much simpler to work with like a smaller story that I was like, oh, this is nice. So I've, I've mostly been practicing uh, making smaller things recently, uh, writing a little bit more, and right now I'm, I'm working in development to make a, a second feature, which I've been speaking to both Ben and Wishies about. Uh, don't really want to talk about what it's what it is yet sure. but uh it's it's more i'm fo- trying to focus a little bit more on those things that we did in sandstein which is like a lot of like the world building and a lot of like the character uh stuff because i think that's what's been really impactful in movies for me recently is just like when the world feels alive and the things that make a world feel alive so that's what i've been developing recently awesome awesome it's a cool it's a cool idea just wait for it Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on on all of your projects. I want them all to come fruition now. Well, guys, this was a blast. Um, thank you guys for coming on here and and chatting about this film. Uh, once it you know it comes out, I cannot wait to see everybody talking about this and see some other reviews. Um, I'll be posting my review next week of this, so you can you can go into oh. more um, detail of uh, how I feel about this film. But I think you guys can probably already guess how I feel. Um, and there is one thing I want to talk to all of you guys about once this is over, so so stick around. But um, thank you seriously for being here and for creating something that felt really fresh and alive, and to be on my favorite streaming platform. Like, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hell yeah! And please, guys, go check this out on Screenbox on December nineteenth. It's going to be one of those films you want to watch on Christmas Day, for sure. Um, But thank you guys so much for being here, and uh, we will catch you on the next one.